Natasha. Pastor Chris Edmonds is a son of the World War II hero master sergeant Roddy Edmonds. Pastor Edmonds hails from Maryville, Tennessee, and is senior pastor of Piney Grove Baptist Church. His father's heroic story and Chris's incredible story to discover it reads like a Hollywood script, but it is all true. Their family was honored, honored this past year at the Israeli Embassy in Washington, D.C. with the Yad Vashem Award for Righteous Among the Gentiles. Please extend to him a warm welcome here in Jerusalem, Pastor Chris Edmonds. Well, thank you, Joel, and thank you, uh, distinguished partners and guests who are here today. I, I feel very intimidated uh, to be here, a little bit like a preschooler with Tinker Toys with a room full of rocket scientists headed to space. Um, before I begin, let me correct something. Where I come from, it's not Maryville, Tennessee, it's Marvel, Tennessee. So look at a neighbor and say Marvel. Now say, how y'all doing? Congratulations, you are now genuine East Tennessee hillbillies. Welcome to the family. To be honest, um, I, I have, we, we've got to travel a, a mountain that would take normally a couple of hours to get to in less than uh, nine minutes now. So uh, you listen well. My story begins with an old diary, a weathered, fragile book. It tells the story of a young man from Tennessee fighting for his country on a continent near the edge of collapse. Its owner, my father, passed away years earlier. Since then, the diary remained tucked away with other mementos from Dad's service during World War II. He had served with distinction. Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds of the 106th Infantry was captured during the Battle of the Bulge and spent 100 harsh, harsh days in two uh, German POW camps toward the end of the war. Now this was the story our family knew. To us, the totality of his service. Service he never talked about. While reading his diary one evening, years after his passing, his words moved my heart. In it, Dad wrote, a lot of things I'm not going to write because they're not exactly nice to talk about. I know God was with us, and he answered our prayers. I learned men even better than before. Listen to this. Some were good, some were bad, some were better, and some were worse. Well, Dad's words inspired me to look further into his service and uncover the true story of his time as a prisoner of war. One evening, just past midnight, I searched Dad's name and rank on my computer. Remarkably, Dad's name appeared in a New York Times article entitled Richard Nixon's Search for a New York Home. The article recounts how an attorney named Lester Tanner sold his historic townhouse to the president in the 1970s. Now, Lester's a staunch Democrat, but he felt sorry for President Nixon, and so he offered his townhouse to him because no one wanted the president as their neighbor. In the article, Mr. Tanner speaks of the bravery and courage of Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds, his Master Sergeant. Well, I'm stunned. Why is Dad's name in an article about the President? Who is Lester Tanner? And what does he mean by bravery? The questions flood my soul. Is Mr. Tanner still alive? And if so, where is he? Well, I find him in New York City. Imagine, picture this, an East Tennessee hillbilly going to New York City for the first time. Baby, let's pack our bags. Make sure you put in my shoes. Well, like Mr. Tanner, um, Mr. Tanner was an American soldier who served honorably during World War II. And when I met Lester, he told me the true story of my dad's time as a prisoner of war. Dad was the highest ranking American soldier in Stalag 9A, a POW camp for non-commissioned officers near Ziegenhain, Germany. It was near the end of the war, late January 1945. 
The Nazis had strict anti-Jew policies, even in the POW camps, segregating Jewish POWs from non-Jews and sending them to really certain death in murderous labor camps. American Jewish soldiers were told by the army if they were fell into enemy hands and captured, they were to destroy their dog tags and never mention their Jewish identity. Late on the evening of January 26, the Nazis ordered my father to send only the Jewish Americans for the next morning's roll call. Without hesitation, Dad turned to his men and he said, we're not doing that. Tomorrow, we all fall out. It was bitterly cold that morning, January 27, 1945. As the ruthless commander approached, he could not believe his eyes. All of the Americans, nearly 1,300 soldiers, were standing in sharp formation, standing together. The German major stormed to my father, and he angrily said, they cannot all be Jews, to which my father declared, we are all Jews here. Well, the Nazi soldier turned blood red. Lunging forward, he pressed his pistol hard into my dad's forehead. One last chance, sergeant, he screamed. You will order the Jewish Americans to step forward, or I will shoot you right now. Well, by this point, Dad and his men had faced untold horrors. Brutal battle, a death march, bombing while imprisoned in a boxcar, 40 days of starvation, where, where every soldier was losing at least a pound a day, being beaten, shot, stripped of his dignity, and the only word that Dad would ever use to describe his experience, humiliated. Just two days earlier, witnessing the savage ex execution of a young Russian soldier and being threatened the same would happen to him and any who disobeyed Nazi orders. Yet there Dad stood, strong, resolute, defiant. Finally, Dad spoke, calmly, courageously. He said, Major, all that's required by the Geneva Convention is name, rank, and serial number and that's all you'll get. If you shoot me, you will have to kill all of us because we know who you are, and you'll stand for war crimes when we win this war, and you will pay. The major blanched and began to tremble. Lester told me your dad never wavered. Then suddenly, without warning, the Nazi pulled the gun to his side, placed it in his holster, turned, and walked away, never to bother the Jewish soldiers again. Dad saved the lives of nearly 200 Jewish Americans that day. Well, last December, I made my first trip to Israel for a pastor, a dream come true. While there, Yad Vashem and the nation of Israel announced Dad as righteous among the nations. Now you know righteous among the nations is the highest honor given to non-Jews who risked their lives to protect Jews during the Holocaust. Dad's only the fifth American to receive this great honor and the first U.S. soldier and the first recognized for rescuing American Jews. The historic ceremony to honor Dad was held at the Israeli embassy, as Joel said, in Washington, Washington this past January 27th, exactly 71 years to the day of that heroic morning. It was hosted by Ambassador Dermer with Prime Minister Netanyahu speaking from Israel. In attendance were Rabbi Lau, my Tennessee Senators, Lamar Alexander and Bob Corker, with special guest, President Obama. It was historic, unprecedented, for a president, a sitting president, to visit the embassy. And who did he bring along with himself? His friend Steven Spielberg. And I spoke before both of those men. I guess I can take warming up the crowd for the president and Mr. Spielberg off my bucket list. It was a remarkable evening. I hope the next remarkable ceremony will be at the White House when the president awards my dad the Congressional Medal of Honor. I think he deserves it. How about you?
For the congressmen who are in the room, there is a bill in the House right now, H.R. 4863. Just keep that in mind. We need your sponsorship. Our family is grateful to Yad Vashem and to the nation of Israel for the amazing honor that they have bestowed upon Dad. We are proud of the life he lived and the choices he made. Very blessed to have learned his story. Even more blessed to have met some of the men and the families he saved. Sonny Fox of California, you see on the left. Next to him is Lester Tanner of New York. Seated is Paul Stern of Virginia. Not pictured is Henry Hank Friedman of Georgia and Skip Friedman of Cleveland. My dad's legacy are these men and their families, their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, and generations to come. Thousands of people are alive and well today because of the righteous choices of my father. I will conclude, since my time has expired, by saying this. My dad is a product of the rule of law. The rule of law that comes from above first and is expressed here on earth and through the in his life through the United States of America. We need to maintain the rule of law in order to have a common decency and a respect for humanity. I want you to know I love Israel. I love all the Jewish community. I love the God of Israel and I love you. And I wanna just pray that God will bless you and bless your nation wherever you're from with his great resources. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Reverend Edmonds, and thank you for coming to Jerusalem to share this important story of your father, a true hero uh, that saved the lives of many.